Hello and welcome to another free Vectric project of the month. As you can see, this month's project is a wall-mounted coat rack, and I call it the Rack Rack Moose. It was inspired by a recent vacation that we took up in northern Maine to a family camp on a lake there. As usual, this month's project includes a full set of illustrated PDF instructions that you can print out. And of course, you can watch the rest of this video to see the process that I use so that it'll help you create your own Rack Rack Moose project. If you want to have a go at making this one yourself, you can download the files from your VNCO account. If you make your own version, please feel free to share that on the Vecric forum and across social media. Of course, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And finally, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe for instant updates on new project videos we release. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and that you'll have fun making this project. Okay, I took a little pause with this board number two and I uh, carved board number one and removed the parts and I took uh, one of these antlers and I've removed the uh, tabs on it and I'll do the same thing with the other one. But this is just to kind of hold that over that pocket area, make sure that that 20 thousandths allowance that I made, which normally works just fine, to see if that's big enough to fit uh, the inlay in. I can't put it all the way in because the board's in the way, but I can get a really good idea. It looks like it's gonna fit just uh, just perfectly. I did the same thing with this uh, moose head and positioned that over the pocket to make sure that that allowance was enough to fit this moose head in. It looks good too. So once I get the final sanding done, I'm sure that these are gonna fit in the pockets just fine. If I had to, if I found that those pockets, uh, the allowance wasn't enough, because I've left the machine uh, as is with the bit still in the collet and so on, I can just go back to the file, increase the allowance by a little bit on this pocket and run just the pocket just to make it a little bit bigger. I won't have to do that in this case because I've gone ahead and made this test. But uh, this is just a good uh, practice. If you're doing inlays, then you uh, go ahead and cut your parts first, do the inlay pockets and see uh, visually there or if you've got enough room there to fit them all the way in, see if they're gonna fit all right.
Okay, the test fit went okay, so I'm getting ready to uh, just figure out where I'm gonna put these uh, hangers that I picked out at uh, one of the uh, Arts and Crafts hobby stores. I've got a couple divots that are part of the project. They're on 16 inch centers, so if you're gonna hang this uh, aligned with a couple studs in the wall, then you've got the 16 inch centers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill uh, countersunk holes uh, at each of those points, and then I'll mount the bracket on the uh, 16 inch centers right over that uh, screw so it's not visible. Then I'm gonna go ahead and mark from the center of each divot over uh, three and seven eighths. That's the spacing I figured would be good for these hangers. So I got these hangers, just uh, be on the lookout. Got these hangers a uh, half price sale and I found out why they're half price. Turns out the hangers aren't flat on the back. So I'm gonna have to grind all four of them. I've already done two and I've got a couple more to go. And what's more, I noticed that these uh, holes to mount these brackets are not perfectly aligned with uh, the vertical nature of the design. So I'm gonna have to get a little creative and pay attention to make sure that looks right once it's mounted. So I'll just uh, go ahead and drill those uh, mounting holes for the 16 inch centers and then uh, pilot holes for all of the brackets once I grind these other two down. I went ahead and measured and marked with a pencil the locations of the uh, coat hangers. And I decided just to, since these holes aren't quite aligned, I just went ahead and marked the le left hole for each one. That way, after I get it mounted on the board, I can rotate it a bit and then I'll make the uh, screw hole for the right side of each hanger after that. So I'll go ahead and drill some pilot holes here. First, I'll drill the countersink for the uh, wall mounting. And then these countersunk holes for the mounting of the brackets. Actually not countersunk, they're just regular pilot holes. Okay, I wanted to get that done before applying the finish. So I'll go ahead and erase these lines with a, a gum eraser and get rid of that and then we'll apply the finish. Okay, everything is sanded up, ready to go. I'm gonna apply a uh, darker finish on this backboard here. And I'm using this Rust-Oleum Ultimate Wood Stain, dries in about an hour. This one's called Golden Mahogany. So I'm gonna wipe that on. I'll try to avoid the areas that uh, I'll be applying glue on when I uh, insert the inlays. So I'll wipe that on, use a brush if I need to have some assistance from that. Now I do want to get a little bit inside here in these inlays because uh, if there's any gap, I don't want it to show the light part of the wood there. So I'm just gonna lightly brush some of this stain where those gaps might appear, if any. And that still gives me plenty of blank wood for gluing the inlays in. Okay, I'll let that sit for a second and then I'll smooth that out, wipe it off. Okay, I'll set this aside to dry and just place it over here and bring on the moose head. I'm gonna try a little bit lighter stain for the moose head, I'm trying for some contrast there. I'll try some of this Rust-Oleum wheat wood stain.
Now I know part of this head's gonna show and some of it's gonna be just in the pocket. So I'll just leave some uh, solid blank wood there for the glue. And we'll help this out a little bit with a brush. Okay, once I get this all wiped off, then I'll go ahead and set this aside to dry too. Okay, the stain's dry. I'm applying a few light coats of this uh, Krylon Crystal Clear before I do the final glue up. So I'm just uh, trying to avoid these areas where I'll be applying some glue. So I'll just go ahead and continue giving a few light coats of the Krylon Crystal Clear Gloss. Now I may follow that up with uh, a flat or a satin, depending on uh, how I want it to look after it's all finished. Once these clear coats are dry, then I'll go ahead and glue all the inlays together. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead the next step and glue the large and small antler pieces together and let that uh, dry while the uh, clear coats on the stain pieces is drying. Okay, now that the glue is dry on the antlers, I'm uh, applying a straight from the can coat or two of this Zenser seal coat, which is uh, basically just a 100% de-wax clear shellac. I use a thinned version of this for sealing for, uh, prior to staining and also for raising grain on 3D carves to uh, be able to sand off uh, any stray fuzzies and so on. But in this case, since I'm leaving the antlers a natural color, I'm just gonna go ahead and seal it with this seal coat, and then I'll apply uh, some Krylon as final coats overall. So I am avoiding uh, the areas where I will be applying glue to the pockets, namely this area here, and also this area on these two smaller antlers here. Probably wouldn't make much difference if I got some shellac on there, I think that uh, glue holds pretty well and adheres to the shellac all right, but uh, you want a wood to wood bond, not a finish to wood bond. So playing it safe. All right, so I'll give this uh, a coat, see how it looks. And if it needs another coat before I apply the final clear coat of uh, Krylon, then I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing here. Uh, I looked at the contrast between this stain and the uh, stain on the moose head and also showed it to my wife and she felt like, and I did too, that it needed a little bit more contrast. And then uh, we look at these hangers and they've got a little bit of a reddish tone. So I've got uh, dark stain, uh, Rust-Oleum Carrington. It's a pretty dark stain. And then I've also got this Rust-Oleum Cabernet, which has got uh, purplish reddish hues to it. And so um, I had this covered, you know, with some light coats of uh, Krylon. So I scuffed that up uh, with some 220 sandpaper. And then uh, I wiped on some of this Carrington, or excuse me, the Cabernet. That's the reddish color one. I'll just do that for you now. So I rub that on. That gives it that sort of a reddish hue. It looks really rich. And then I just went back and got some of this Cabernet, or Carrington rather. And you can see that's quite a bit darker stain there. And I'm just sort of dry brushing it with a, a stiff brush. And then going over it again with the rag, just to even it out. I think that really adds a lot to it. I, I like that. That's a pretty nice, rich color there. So anyway, if you feel like uh, experimenting around with uh, different color stains, don't be afraid to do so. Even if you've already applied uh, or started to apply clear coats, just scuff it up a little bit with some 220 and uh, apply it over the top of that and then uh, wait for that to dry, then you can uh, go ahead and finish it up with your regular clear coats. 
Time to glue in all the inlays, all the parts together. So I'm just gonna apply glue where they make contact here. Okay, we're on the home stretch. Just gotta mount these uh, coat hooks. As you can see, here's one of the mounting holes, the countersunk hole for the wall mount into uh, 16 inch center studs. And I've got the left hand hole pre-drilled and that covers up the mounting hole. So you put this on uh, before or after you uh, mount it on the wall. And I just put one screw in so I can adjust this uh, side to side and I'll make the other pilot hole for the other screw just to make sure this is going straight up and down. Well, there we have it, folks. Another project successfully completed. I hope you enjoyed making your own Rack Rack Moose Coat Rack. This is Michael Totter signing off for now. We'll see you next month with another free Vectric Project of the Month. Happy carving!